everybody, it's Kamal Fernandez here from Kamal Fernandez Dog Training. Uh, hope everybody is keeping safe and well, and you are looking after each other and your uh, your families and your dogs, and you're managing to get through this challenging time that we are all currently in. Those of you that follow me on Facebook would have seen that I've been doing a series of video conversations, uh, obviously because we're all in lockdown, with people that I consider friends, peers, mentors, um, and people that I look up to in the world of dog training and beyond um, to discuss uh, and to give their insight into how they're dealing with the situation at present and to hopefully the mantra that I'm using to talk about it is to uh, a rising tide lifts all ships so this series is called lifting all ships where if we all can pull together and raise each other up we'll all be able to get through this and be better for it the person across from me now on the screen is my brother from another mother, uh, the one and only Craig Ogilvy, a very, very good friend of mine, um, training, com rad, training comrade, um, absolutely love the bones of the guy, great person, kind, generous, giving, and I thought I would call on him to um, give you guys some insight into how he's getting through um, the COVID-19 situation uh, and w any ideas he has from his vast experience about what we can do with our dogs in these situations. Craig, dude, thank you very much for joining me. I'm much appreciated. How are You're you? You're more than welcome, my man. Really good. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm keeping well. How are you guys doing? Yeah, really well. That's the nicest introduction you've ever, ever given <laughs> Normally, it's some sort of sarcastic <laughs> comment, yeah. isn't it? About you doing your hair or your Instagram yeah. posts. Yeah, taking the mic about selfies <laughs> or something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing good. Um, everything's uh, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit challenging, but we're making the best of it. Um, everything's going as normal as it possibly can be with training the dogs, fitting all of the work in. It's just a massive shift in tides, as you say, really, isn't it? There's so much uh, change that's happening, but I think the key is just to make the best of what is a not ideal situation. Yeah. So, how are you coping with um work, and has it changed for you in terms of obviously you you. Uh, uh, an international presenter so you travel so i know that there has been some trips that have to be cancelled how's that affected your work as an individual yes yeah, so i'm unfortunate it's just um part of what's happened but mm -hmm. all of the international stuff which was quite a lot this year has been cancelled or rescheduled mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's some stuff later on in the year that is still like undergoing yep. will we go ahead or will we not mm -hmm. but i'm supposed to go to norway i'm supposed to be in ireland now and then Cyprus next month. So all of those have unfortunately been postponed. But it's just what's happened, really. Yeah. So i just got to make the most of it. I'm really lucky as I've got quite an established online coaching like, business mm -hmm. going. So not that much has changed apart from I'm not traveling um, mm -hmm. and training and doing like, seminars and stuff. So it's just the case of all of the online stuff just boosting up a little bit more so and spending a lot more time doing that, which is good because it's keeping us busy. I think that's the, the key. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously, you know, those those of us that travel etc um it, it is you know it is a different it's the the, the decision has been taken out of our hands but i don't know about you craig but it's actually quite nice to be grounded and be at home for a period of time which is very very unlike my schedule so i'm actually making yeah. the most of it you know whilst i'm at home i'm getting those jobs done that um you know that needed to be doing craig is far more dab handed than what i am you wouldn't want me building anything in your hat life let me tell you now dog training is definitely my niche area of expertise craig can build a gate and stuff like that i don't have those skills but so what have you been getting up to because craig um you know has a really great situation now and that him and his partner um who hopefully i'll be getting on these conversations as well at some point um have a a great premises uh in england um and they are very fortunate they've been there for, was it about six months um since august last yeah, year so yeah, uh, yeah it's well, just over, a little yeah. over six months now so actually yeah, you know, so. you're in a very situ fortunate situation where you have space and you have land and you can train etc um but that obviously that hasn't always been the case you you know you so how what would you uh, how would you advise people that are you know with their dogs what can they do when they are um you know limited for space and um what can they do for training their dogs and certainly the dogs that you know you and i deal with a lot which are the more high drive extreme dogs mm -hmm. what are things that they can do to make best use of that time and the restrictions in place so for me the, the best thing to do um just stepping away from uh, the dogs for a moment is, is to stick with some type of a structure or some type of a routine throughout the day so that the, the, your day is 
as similar as it possibly could be as when this wasn't going on. So even if we set a new schedule so that you've got, like, you get up, um, I know that I get up first thing in the morning, stereotypically I work out for an hour or a couple of hours, Mm -hmm. then I get some work done, and then I get on with training the dog. So I think it's really important just to stick with a routine, otherwise it could become a little bit easy to become stuck with all, I'll stay in bed a little bit longer, etc., etc. And then with regards to dogs, like we've said, we're really, really, really fortunate because we've got land and we have got space to train here. Um, but with Zen, a, a lot of the time since this has happened, I've actually been working on smaller fundamental skills. So we've been training together lots and lots. We've been working on the little component parts of the defensive handler um, for Mondio Ring. So I've been doing lots of work around contact and him moving and pivoting around me, which actually doesn't require like a great deal of space. We've done yeah. quite a bit of that upstairs in one of the spare bedrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, and then been working on generalizing the objects of his retrieve, which again hasn't... Um, required a great deal of space because all I'm really working on is a component part of him picking up and holding Mm -hmm. things that are (coughs) a little bit different in material and then just working on his listening for like his distance control Mm -hmm. um, in different sets of circumstances with Mm -hmm. different things going on Mm -hmm. switching and alternating through behaviors and this is where for me um, like the trick training aspect Mm -hmm. is really important because there's so much that you can do via free shaking in such a small in such a small space like there's there's so much mental yep, stimulation that you can yeah. give a dog in, in like yeah. a bedroom and <clears throat> that's uh, that's something that I think is really really important mm-hmm. because you're able to you're, you're able to use so much of their thinking ability in such a mm-hmm. short period of time yep. during something like a free shaking session which again can be done in like a spare bedroom a kitchen yep. the di- um, dining room living room which yep. is a lot of the stuff that the guys that I'm working with online um, are going ahead with now yeah excellent so in a- so just to qualify for those of you listening that don't know what Mondio Ring is, Mondio Ring is a sport um, which is done globally. Um, Craig is what you would call a decoy. So decoy is the person that wears, in this, this circumstances, is the bite suit and the dog sent to, um, you know, bite the dog. And there's a lot of control around it. So and and the test can be quite extensive. It can last up to 45 minutes at any one time. And there's a lot going on. It's done in quite a large arena and the dog has to do various obedience exercises and agility exercises and then bite work and control so the premise of it is very contradictory to training in component parts or into small pieces however that's exactly how all good dog training should be on training tiny little pieces of a puzzle and then you eventually interwove them together so you know as craig mentioned we've been training quite a lot together um, we have a monthly get together. There's a small group of us that um, train together, and it's the uh, the rare opportunity we all have to work together as a, a and have utilised the skills of others. But primarily, that and that's only done once a month. Primarily, we all train on our own, and we all go away and work on the little pieces in varying degrees. So we have to be a bit creative about what we do. Um, so it has to, it might be in small spaces. It might be thinking a little bit out of the box about <coughs> your training. Um, I know Craig posted some stuff on Instagram where he's um, got his bite suit or a, a bite wrap um, hung up from, um, uh, uh, you know, hung up. So his dog, so it mimics the, the a, a secondary person involved. So really what this time is about is about being creative about your dog training solutions as opposed to perceiving them as what you can't do. There's always things that you could do. Would you say, Craig? Yeah, I think it's, I, I think what you're saying is exactly right. And I think the easiest way to, develop an understanding of what you could work on during this time is to make a list of the things or the behaviors that you'd like as your end goals and then break them break them down into smaller component parts because as you say there's so many smaller component parts to the bigger behaviors and if you get the components really nice and clear in the dog's head um as we start to work towards the bigger behavior it just makes it that little bit easier so you go the example of me hanging up like the costume pants um on like a little a wooden rail that I've got um, in the garden, which could be done in a regular mm-hmm. garden. So I'm not really focusing on the dog's ability to bite at that yep. point. What I'm focusing on control. is, yeah, well, is his ability to come back to me yep. when I call him, come back to the mm-hmm. heel position. And that was the focus point of that yep. session. So we only did like four or five bites with him, mm-hmm. and they were all given, the bites were given really close in yep. so that I could target him where I wanted to. And then just changing the um, area that mm-hmm. I'm standing in. So um, sometimes I stand like dead square on mm-hmm. so that he'd turn around and come back to me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I stand off to an angle. 
angle. Sometimes I'd hide behind a chair. Mm -hmm. So the dog's thinking all of the time, oh, where's that? I need to get back to the foot position, which I think the more, if you write it down, the more you can think about how you're going to train, what you're going to do, and what are the little component parts. Because for everybody, me included, Mm -hmm. there's so many little bits that you think, oh, that needs to be better. And this is is the time, I think, that everybody can utilize to really work around those component parts and make them as good as they can be. And the massive benefit of it for me is, is you can get lots of little sessions in throughout the day. I mean, yeah. I love, I absolutely love coaching. I love working on laptop and I love coaching all of my guys. But you can only stare at a laptop screen yeah. for so long until yeah. your brain starts to shut down. Yeah. So, like, a couple of hours on the laptop, grab Zen, um, off we pop out into the garden, we do a little bit of training, we yeah. come back in, I'm refreshed, ready to go again. Yeah. And it, it's just like a nice break yeah. throughout the day, which I really think would benefit yeah. everybody, particularly during a time, because the days are so long. Like, yeah. I usually get up really early in the morning yeah. and... I've tried purposely to lay in bed just a tiny little bit longer because now the days are so much longer yeah. if you're just at home all day. Yeah, so yeah. if you've got little breaks and you think, right, I'm going to look forward this afternoon, mm-hmm. I'm going to train his hold on different um, yep. items. Mm-hmm. You've got something to look forward to all of the time, which I think is really important. Again, it's giving the dogs all of the stimulation that they need. Absolutely. And, you know, um, the dog that Craig has talked about is um, Zen, who's his young mother. He's about, was he about 18 months now? Yeah, just yeah, over 18, 18, months, 18 months, now. months. So he's got typical he's a very 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 intense high drive dog he's adolescent um obviously he's you know he's been trained for a sport that is all about drive um and encouraging drive and it's the thing to to uh, take from what craig has said is that it's about tiny little sessions and using the dog's gray matter using the dog's brain and getting the dog to think constantly when you're training them those things help the dog then be able to come in and when like craig um is working the dog's just literally zenning out next to him and chilling out and and, you know that's because the dog's had you know a little bit of mental stimulation he's had physical stimulation it doesn't have to be i'm going to take him for a four mile walk and da 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 it's those little drip feeding sessions isn't it craig throughout the day in actual fact in my personal opinion and in my experience i find that it's the little sessions of getting the dog thinking yeah, regularly brain stuff. um are the things that really drain them mentally yeah. because with with a dog like a malinois working bred german shepherd border collie and all of the above all of mm-hmm. the dogs that have got lots of motivation and drive regardless of their breed mm-hmm. i often find that what people do is they go really top heavy on physical exercise yeah, yeah. when in effect what they're doing really is just making the dog fitter, fitter. and fitter and fitter yeah. which means that it takes that much longer, longer to, get to, um, really, yeah. to yeah, yeah to physically tie them as where yeah. if they're like activating you're really getting them thinking yeah. it, it makes it that much easier for them to settle particularly yeah. like if you do a few sessions in the day i mean in the evening by the mm-hmm. time it comes to settling down mm-hmm. or even when i'm working during the day he's often just off to one side on the bed sleeping he's in yeah. his little crate now like asleep because we've just done the training session yeah. and, and, and he would be happy there for you know for an hour a couple yeah, yeah. of hours or yeah. even, that's even a really good that. That's a good little tip in that. Obviously, my dogs are all crate trained. Craig's the dogs are crate trained. Our dogs are very accustomed to being in the crate. They are happy in the crate. It's like their second bedroom. I have a crate up all the time. My dogs will quite happily, like they'll take themselves in it and you'll see them vegging out in there and they'll rotate around. Um, <coughs> it's a really, when it's times like this, sometimes, you know, it can be quite intense when you've got a lot of people in the house that's different or if you have a puppy or a young dog. To have a, them crate trained or put work into crate training them, you know, get a con, get a meaty bone, stuff them some food in a chew, etc. Pop them in the crate and allow them to chill out there for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, etc. That's good practice for them to learn so that then when you, for example, are working from home. So we're all being pushed to have to work at home. I'm working at home. Craig's working at home. To be truthful, there's times when I need to concentrate on a task. I don't want to be worrying about my puppy. So my puppy goes into a crate. She's got a Kong or she's got a Chew, etc. Um, especially, you know, if you have dogs that are more high drive, they're going to be demanding and you want to teach them to settle, which is a really, really good skill for them to learn and to have that really solid on and off switch, for, which, will, which will, ironically enough, benefit them when it comes to training and work. Yeah, absolutely, because particularly for dogs that are a little bit more motivated, they're wanting to do all of the time, yeah. it's really important for calm and relaxed behaviour um, to be instigated in lots of different places, and it can be done, you know, in the house, in the crate, as I say, Zen's got, like, a crate, he's got a bigger pen area, which is actually what he is in now, and he goes in there, he's got, like, buffalo horns, um, yeah. I give him Kongs really regularly, yeah. but also, when I'm working with him, it's very seldom that I just pop him on his bed, and give him absolutely nothing to do. He's always got the option of like a yak chew, yeah. a Kong stuck with stuffing, a buffalo horn with peanut butter spread yeah. around it. And very often what happens, because we've been doing something, he eats a little bit of the buffalo horn, clears the peanut butter out, and then just goes to sleep. And he'll be there. He's been there happily throughout this period, mm-hmm. you know, for a couple of hours asleep on his side whilst I've been working, which again I think is 
it's really important to give them those little periods throughout the day because again it's another form of enrichment which is going to utilize um their thought processes and their brain and keep them nice and relaxed yeah and i think the other thing to that why that is beneficial is you what can often happen is if you're doing these strip feeding sessions you can create a dog that gets especially that type of dog you can create them getting really over aroused by you and and okay we're gonna go and train and they can get which is great we want them to be excited by the prospect of training but what we don't want to ultimately do is create a dog that's ever ready and sort of like oh are we gonna do something and creating that hyper vigilance so it's equally important when you are training that ill for dog to work on them understanding yes we're gonna go and train but actually now we're gonna do nothing we're gonna hang out we're gonna set the sofa and actually your job or your role is to do absolutely nothing and just chill with me and that's really really important for them to have both aspects of their training and people place a lot of emphasis on how do i occupy my dog how do i reach them how do i expel their energy but also it's really important to teach them sometimes we do nothing and that's yeah, absolutely fine yeah to relax and to just and i personally don't use an extensive amount of reinforcement when they relax i almost just allow them to be in their prey mm-hmm. i'm adjacent to them they might have some you know mundane toys in there but not in anything i don't strip feed them food they just have to mm-hmm. learn to chill out and as you said zen out so that's really really great advice so obviously you've done online coaching for uh, for quite a while now isn't you since you yeah. since started up yeah. yeah yeah since i've started up it's been a really long time yeah. yeah so how does that work and if people want to reach you how would they get in touch with you craig all of my stuff i only take on like quite a limited amount of people which is up to now obviously with the times being the way that they are yeah. but all of my coaching um happens via whatsapp so i do it on a one-to-one basis there's no like cookie dough cut yeah. style yeah coaching it i work with people with independent problems independent issues and everything goes via whatsapp so people send me over video updates mm-hmm. but just as we've got the camera set up now mm-hmm. i set up and give them video feedback of what we're going to do during the day and then with regards to the behaviors that they're working on if i need to grab a dog we've got like four of them here with mm-hmm. me and marie together i'll grab mm-hmm. a dog and show them what i want them to work around and then they send me videos back and we just work through the course of the activities that we're doing but yeah it's really fun it's um it's been a really fantastic gift particularly during this time because mm-hmm. you're able to keep your mind working keep people working mm-hmm. with their dogs and yeah. you know keep your finger on the pulse so to speak so um if anybody wants to get in contact with you craig what's the best way is it facebook um instagram how's the best way to contact you so both of my social medias are probably the best way to get in contact mm-hmm. it's craig ogilvy dog training on instagram as well as on facebook mm-hmm. and then my email address is at Craig Ogilvy Dog Training.com. So any of those outlets would be fine to get in contact with me. Okay, I'll put those in the link. Just say your um the address. I think you just broke slightly. It's Craig Ogilvy at. Oh, you cut out there. Oh, just your um your email again. So it's Craig at Craig Ogilvy Dog Training.com. Perfect. All right, cool. We've got that. Okay, so um obviously everybody that follows you on Instagram and Facebook will know that you're a keen fitness fanatic. Um, so how have you been managing that in this challenging time? Obviously, you know, gyms, etc. are all closed. Um, yeah. After you picked your teddies up off the pram, after you had your little tantrum, <laughs> how are you coping with um, that? What have you been doing? So after the initial little bit of a tantrum, mm-hmm. um, again, like, it, for me, I think the routine is really important. Well, yep. particularly for me anyway, I find particular benefit in the routine. So although um, I've set my alarm a tiny little bit later, which I find challenging, I still get up and get on with cardio, like first thing in the morning, mm-hmm. um, pretty much every morning. Really lucky as with I've, I've already got a cardio bike here. Yep. So I've, I, and I've had one for quite a long time now. Um, so I, I get on the bike and I usually do between half an hour and 45 minutes cardio. Mm-hmm. And then we've just got some much lighter weights than I'm used to doing, like used to working with but we've got some of those and then i just carry on with a workout in the living room Mm -hmm. um and just up the repetitions up the intensity shorter gaps in between exercises Mm -hmm. and just make sure that the exercise variation on each day is enough so that i feel um i feel like i've worked Mm -hmm. and then that is the setup for me come on like every day if i get i get cardio so i train three days on the trot with weights and then have one day's break Mm -hmm. where i still do cardio and then go back into weights again Mm -hmm. and that has always been the key for me that gives me the energy that gives me the boost that gives me the wake up i've got my first goal out of the way today yeah now let's get on with doing some work which 
which I think everybody to some degree mm -hmm. um, will be able to benefit for, even if it's going out into the back garden yeah. and doing like a 10 minute hit session yep. just to get some blood pumping around your body. I know um, a particularly good resource is uh, Joe Wicks, the body coach. Yep. He pumps out lots and lots of free content mm -hmm. where people can get out, get themselves moving, get lots of activity going. And it just makes you feel so much better. It's yeah, always made me feel so much better. So even on the long days when I'm working, mm -hmm. I get up, I teach seminars, I've got coaching responses to do. I, I don't feel tired because of the workouts in the morning. So mm -hmm. I think if people could stick to that routine, even if it's get out in the garden, mm -hmm. um, do a hit session. Okay, yeah. we, I don't want to do a hit session. It's a little bit too high intensity. Get out in the back garden and do some jogging on the spot. Yeah. Get a skipping rope. Yeah. Just do something to get yourself moving first yeah. thing in the morning, even if it's only 10 minutes. Yeah. And I, I really do feel that it will make you feel better. Um, and give you like the energy to get going on Definitely. for the day. And I think <coughs> certainly in this this at this moment that we're all in, see, shuffle myself up. It's very easy to get overwhelmed and to get down and to get anxious about the 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 current state of the, the situation. And you know, everybody knows exercise and releasing those all endorphins are going to make you feel better about yourself, and and it gives you that feel good. So you know, as Craig mentioned, <coughs> doing some sort of activity is great. Obviously, we are allowed to take our dogs out. Um, I've been able to get my dogs out at the moment. That may change as the time um, passes. We might <coughs> have more restrictions in place. Um, so again, it's about being creative with what you can do. So, you know, as Craig said, you know, just use, you know, get out there, do some exercise, get your body going. There's loads and loads of stuff on YouTube that you can, like, no weight or exercise um, uh, gu guides and instructionals and stuff like that, resistance band stuff. That's what I've been doing, kettlebell stuff. So there's loads and loads that you could do that, um, you know, to keep yourself, not only is it about keep yourself well physically, but to keep yourself well mentally. I think that's yeah, a really, sure. really key thing, you know. For me, you know, um, my dog, keep my obviously my, my daughter keeps me busy and she keeps me active and she keeps me buoyant, you know, family making sure they're all right. But a big part of my, my peace of mind is down to my dogs, being able to exercise them and interact with them and also physical exercise, which I've always done, same for Craig. And I think it's really, really important to um, uh, to keep that going, um, even when we are challenged. You know, um, in you know, like Craig attends the gym regularly, so do I. You know, it's it's a huge part of our our routine, which gives us structure, which then allows us to function better. But it's to finding ways to keep that. And again, as Craig has said several times, have that routine, have that discipline to keep yourself upbeat. You know, um, if it's not something that you've you've done, start. You know, this is a great time. We're going to have yeah, all this time. Sure. Start something. Start looking on YouTube. Look on, um, you know, there's loads and loads of stuff there. There's people, um, fitness stuff that's going out all the time now and on home workouts, stuff that you can, oh, you can, one second. Stuff that you can do yourself um, to keep you um, buoyant and to keep you optimistic and to keep you positive. So, no, great advice there. So, in terms of your, um, oh, sorry, I'm just, one second, Craig. Sorry, I've just got messages coming through and I have to... So in terms of your own, um, uh, your goals for this year and what you're looking to do with your own dog, how is that altered from, because of this current situation? Has it altered for you? Uh, obviously, um, your other half, Marita, um, a lot of their, the agility schedules have gone by the by. Um, what have you? Is it made any changes for you as a per, as an individual, as a, a, a as a trainer? So, with regards um, to dog training, obviously we're in a little bit of like uncharted territory now as regards to when everything's going to restart mm -hmm. again. Um, for myself, I know particularly for Marita, who's um, a very active competitor in agility, mm -hmm. it's changed lots of her plans throughout the year. Mm -hmm. But what we've both done is, again, after the initial shock of it happening, is we've both started to think about breaking down, again, component parts yep. of behaviours. What can we make better? What can we improve on? And what can we work together on as well? Because one of the things that is fantastic about my job is that like I get to travel and I get to work with so many different mm -hmm. dogs and I, I really, really love and enjoy mm -hmm. um, my job more than anything else in the world. But part of that is that I don't spend like an incredible amount of time with Marie because we're always on the road. You yeah. know that well as well. We're yeah. always on the road. We're always teaching. And one of the gifts or like the silver linings to the cloud is mm -hmm. that you get to spend just a little bit more time with Marie and we get to swap knowledge. We get yeah. to train together. We get to look at what each other are doing, you know, swap advice, which is, I think, the time is obviously terrible 
but there is also a silver lining to it yeah. with regards to there's things that we can work on we get just a little bit more time to spend with loved ones and, and i think ultimately appreciating the things that we've got access to now and the things that seem so simple before that we we're exposed to all of yeah. the time that you know we, we, we're really missing so yeah. the goals have changed but I, I think it's also important that now we just change the markers with regards to what can we make better what can we help the dogs develop? How can we help develop their skills so that when everything or when the wheels start rolling again, we can make ourselves that little bit better going into competition or going into the goals that we originally had set as well. Yeah, sure. And also, um, it's taken, uh, it's also given me the opportunity to work on different things as well. Mm -hmm. So teaching different tricks, things mm -hmm. that are completely out of the context mm -hmm. that are never going to have anything to do with the sport that I'm training mm -hmm. for, but also just to really um, help me and the dog develop and keep our, sh our skills nice and yeah, sharp. Yeah. Because yeah. one of the most amazing things about doing what we do is that we get to work with lots and lots of different a very regular basis and i'm really big behind being practically minded and being able to train and actually you know put the wood on the wall with regards to yeah. training dogs and yeah. i think it's really important to keep you, yourself nice and sharp so that when we go back into it we're still as sharp as ever yeah so um just to uh finish up this conversation then craig so any um final sort of words of wisdom or optimism for those people that are out there um looking to um work with their dogs in this time uh, things that they can do any little simple tips you tips you've mentioned so you've mentioned shaping that's a great one you've mentioned trick training any other little skills they could work on with in their home with limited space and resources i think the other thing that's um really useful is searching games so they're oh, things they're that um, I've, I've regularly put into place um with my dogs i haven't done it with zen yet because we've so we've been so filled with um doing different activities mm -hmm. but searching games are one of the things that i recommend and coach my clients through all of the time because there's so much fun that can be had with yep. it whether the dogs are searching for food or you teach them a little bit more of a formal article search and retrieve mm -hmm. or search and indication there's so much that can be done in a very small area like the kitchen but then you've always got the ability um to make the exercise even bigger because you've always got the access to your whole house so yep. for like Mon mondio ring we work with the petty block on said differentiation uh, activity where the dog has to differentiate your scent on different bits of wood mm -hmm. that are laid out in the terrain mm -hmm. and that's an activity that i'm certainly teaching at the moment with regards to holding and retrieving mm -hmm. but as we start to develop and if this continues what i will be doing is putting that into place in different places in the house but for the guys that i work with mm -hmm. um they're doing it regularly in different places in the house and the garden with both food and um, other items and it's working really well for them because it, it feels a relative amount of time for the dogs you can get lots of repetitions in yep. um if the dogs find it reinforcing and it's just fun for the dog and the hand though you can see like particularly for the guys i've been helping with it, it they've been having fun with it yeah excellent that's a great one so scent work and and searching stuff to keep your dogs uh, interested and to not only expel physical energy but mental energy in a productive way in confined spaces thank you very much and, great and, and also also for um the other thing that i would say um mm -hmm for the people as well is i've been using the time to get a little bit more studying as well okay. so i know that sometimes like reading textbooks and stuff can be a little bit boring mm -hmm. or depending on how minded you are but there's lots of information that's relevant to what we do as dog mm -hmm. trainers and i've been fitting in like a, a good few hours each yep. day of study and working around different subjects whether it's for your specific sport or something different learning different things because it's all ammunition effectively yep. that we can use positively later on and then you can start to take ideas away from what you're learning and put it into place at home regardless of the space or the time um, that you've got available we've got lots of time and i know the space is going to be limited but i still feel there's so much that we can do in a relatively small space with not lots going on and taking the time and just really utilizing it as much as possible cool excellent personal development so a great one so yeah. i think that's something that all professional dog trainers should be looking at constantly of personal development how can i make myself better how can i keep myself abreast of what's going on in the world and certainly in part in our industry it's very easy to get into your groove and yeah i'm in my little bubble which is fine to a degree but you also want to look beyond um at other things that are going on so that you can pull from those because the the the, the science and the knowledge is constantly evolving and constantly growing and constantly developing so <coughs> excuse me um it's really really a great time to um expand your knowledge and your personal growth fantastic tips there craig Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your knowledge and your wisdom. I really appreciate it. Um, love to you both. Take care. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, for watching and listening and to Craig. You're very welcome, Kamal. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you for having me. And everybody stay safe. Take care. Thank you. Bye.